Hey friend, Roger Christofferson here again with another first listener review, although this is really not actually a first listener review if you count the fact that this was released way back in 2000 originally. This is the remastered, uh, remixed, all kinds of extra stuff um, version of the Universal Migrator, um, both the part one, the Dream Sequencer, and part two, Flight of the Migrator, released as one uh, solid piece um, by the band or project called Arion. Now, in case anybody out there doesn't know who that is, um, there is a, a Dutch multi-instrumentalist by the name of Aaron Lucasen, and he pretty much has uh, been the, the mastermind behind all these uh, albums. Uh, he's released a ton and ton of albums. I found this guy, I don't know, back, I think my first encounter with them was when he released The Human Equation. I think that was the first thing I got. But these two albums actually came out before that. I didn't get them till after that. But uh, he's released a ton of albums and his thing is he records all these big albums. Most of them have a storyline. This one has a storyline. Some of them, there's a couple that don't. But um, this one has a storyline. It's very strange. It's science fiction. It has something to do about going back to Mars and mind control and time travel and all kinds of stuff. There's a whole big massive release with this thing that uh, you get all that stuff. Um, you know, it's like a big box set with this. Um, you get uh, like a comic book version if you want that. There's a, you know, a 4LP version of it. There's, uh, you know, just multiple different versions of this that you can get if you want. I, however, once again, got this off of Bandcamp because I like supporting the, uh, the uh, artists and stuff on Bandcamp. Um, I, you know, just feel like that's the right thing to do. They get... 100% of the money and stuff that goes into the, all you know anything you buy on there so I like to support all the people on there and so I got this one off of Bandcamp um, but yeah so I'm also going to try not to make this uh, too long of a one because it's a very very long album um, so I'm not going to go through every single song or anything like that on it but I just wanted to make a mention of a few things um, when it was originally released the uh, Part one was kind of like they re actually they released simultaneously at the exact same time. Um, the first album was kind of like a m the mellower, more dreamy moodscapes is kind of how I think how they refer to it version, and then part two was like a heavier metal rock album. Um, the guest that he has on this one, the, actually the first part one, he uh, has a drummer that he's worked with like forever called Ed Warby. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm always horrible with these names, or these European names get me every time. But he used, uh, on his last album, uh, Transitus, he uh, used a different drummer that he had played with in like 35 years. It was like one of the drummers he'd played with in one of his previous bands and got back together with him and redid that one. Other than that, just Ed Warby's played on uh, pretty much everything, I think. Um, and uh, I forget the guy's name on this one. I'm trying to find it real quick here. Rob Snyder's played drums on the first one. And Aaron does most of the uh, instrumentation. He does have Clive Nolan does a solo on one track. Eric Norlander plays on uh, several of the tracks. His wife, Lana Lane, in case you didn't know, those two are married. They uh, <clears throat> play, she sings on a few of the tracks. You got uh, John Edlund from Tiamat. Four Jansen sings on this one. Uh, Ed Reekers from Kayak, Jacqueline Govert, um, who I'm not familiar with, plays on this one, Damian Wilson from Threshold, and Neil Morse all play on the first one, or sing on the first one, I should say, and um, there's just as many uh, guest appearances on the second one as well, uh, the second one, part two, being called Flight of the Migrator, it does have Ed Warby back playing on this one, and it's a lot of more people guest on this one on the uh, instruments uh, Michael Romero Romeo, sorry, pronounced that wrong Oscar Holman, Gary Verkamp, uh, Rene Merkelbach, Clive Nolan once again, Kiko Kumagai and Peter Seiblack I don't know who those last two guys are uh, sorry, and on vocals on this one, we got Russell Allen, I mean, come on, this killer, Damien Wilson again, Ralph Sheepers Andy Darris from Halloween, Bruce Dickinson Fabio Leone, Timo Cotapelco from Stradivarius, and then a couple of people, I'm sorry I'm not familiar with them, Robert 
Soderboik, Soderboik, I don't know how you pronounce that one, Ian, Ian Perry, um, you know, he's, these are not the only people he's had, he's had a ton of guests, you know, people singing on his stuff, and I've watched documentaries on how he does it, and how he interacts with people, and he's such a cool dude, when he's, he just lets these people do whatever they want to do with the song, he gives them like a basic structure, and then he kind of lets them do whatever they want with the songs, kind of making it their own, um, so he's definitely cool that way, and, uh, this was fun to listen to. I mean, I saw an interview with him because he posts a lot of stuff on his uh, own channel, and I like watching what he posts. And he just never felt like this one was mixed properly or got the the attention it deserves. And he's always wanted to like fix a few things on it. <clears throat> and uh, listening through, it uh, definitely sounds. Um, I don't know how to describe it. Though. I mean, because the first one was good. There was no, I don't think there was anything wrong with the first version of it. But you can hear that it's got a little bit more of a real feel to it, um, instead of being extremely, well, at least the first one, sounds more uh, like it was actually played. I mean, the first one originally, I guess, sounded a little bit more uh, stale. I mean, I guess that's the way to put it. Part two, he brought out the live performances a little bit better. I think he actually, it, feel, it seems like maybe the guitar is a little bit more up front, but this seems that way to me. It's been a while since I listened to the first one that kind of bounced back and forth here after listening through um, a couple times. One thing I bummed about, I was reading here, there's a bonus CD that uh, I guess if you buy the hard version of it, yeah, you can get, but uh, that doesn't look like that's available here on Bandcamp anywhere. At least I'm not seeing it, but uh, so I'm probably going to end up buying this one anyway. <laughs> so, uh, you know, all these box sets coming out this uh, this week, you know, Man, it's funny how that happened right before Christmas. Um, so, you got anybody out there who likes these bands? There's a whole bunch of box sets that came out this week. Um, so, anyway, just wanted to make that really quick. Um, a lot of love to this guy, and I think he deserves a lot more attention than what he gets, at least uh, here in the United States. I'm sure overseas there in Europe, they seem to like really uh, know more about him and uh, you know the style of music that uh, seems more prominent over there. But it's just maybe that's just my the way I see it, but uh, yeah, if you guys know of him or anything that you want to, you know, input in on that you like of his or don't like about his stuff, you know, <clears throat> I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. I've, I really like his uh, even the stuff that he does outside of of Arian. He's did some stuff called the Gentle Storm uh, with the singer from the the Gathering. I think uh, I can't ever pronounce her name, so I'm not even going to try. And he's done some other stuff before that. Um, yeah, I think he has a solo album out as well. But um, I don't listen to that stuff quite as much. Um, uh, I know he's got one other project out there too that I can't think of right now. But anyway, yeah, there's just, if you see his name on anything, it's worth checking out. Just uh, if you're into progressive metal or <clears throat> even a lot of the stuff outside of uh, Arian isn't really that metal. But uh, yeah, he's just uh, like a super talented guy and just seems to be nonstop with the stuff he puts out and. Uh, it's nice to hear this redone. I guess he probably did it more for him and uh, his diehard fans uh, more than trying to, like, you know, come out with something new, I guess. But uh, whatever, I'm just babbling at this point. So if you guys, you know, have any input, make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below, share, all that fun stuff. And uh, I'll take a break till next weekend, I think. So <laughs> talk to you then. See you.